an update on cases of the Brazilian variant of concern, and extra funding to support mental health in schools. Because, of course, on Monday, uh, that met, marks our first step in the opening up after this lockdown. Next week, classrooms will once again be buzzing with activity. And I know that parents across England will be delighted and I'm sure relieved that all children are going back to school. Also from Monday, I'm just so pleased that we're re able to reopen care homes to visiting. We've put in place a really careful policy so each care home resident will be able to register a single regular visitor who will be tested and wear PPE but be able to visit. And I know that this means so much to hundreds of thousands of people with a loved one in a care home and to those who live in care homes. And I'm really, really glad that we're able to make this step. So first, let's turn to the latest coronavirus data. And this data shows the progress we've made, including more evidence on the impact of the vaccine in saving lives. If I could have the first slide, please. Here you can see the number of cases of COVID-19. And I'm pleased to say that the cases are still falling. The average daily number of cases is 6,685, the lowest since late September. And the weekly case rate across the UK is now 84 per 100,000 people. The latest figures from the Office for National Statistics that were published earlier today report a further significant decline. They show that in England, one in 220 people have coronavirus, a fall from one in 145 last week. This is all encouraging news, and it should give us confidence that we can safely take the steps that we're taking on Monday. Next slide, please. Slide two shows the hospital admissions with COVID, and it shows that they are falling too. There are still 12,100 and 36 people in hospital in the UK with COVID. That's still too high. But the average number of new admissions to hospital is uh, 900, the lowest since October. Next slide, please. Thankfully, the number of deaths with COVID are also declining steeply. The average number of deaths per day is 248, also the lowest since October. And here, the decline... days now. Not only that, there are now fewer people dying from all causes in care homes than is normal for this time of year. Taken together, these three slides show that we're heading in the right direction, although that there is further to go. And what we can also see in the data across the whole UK is that the vaccine programme is working to protect the NHS and saving lives. If we go on to the next slide, the best way to see this is by looking at how fast cases, hospital admissions and deaths are falling. The number of cases have been which is good news for us all. Next slide, please. Now let's turn to the number of hospital admissions. Again, this is falling steadily at uh, just under 30% every week. But there are signs that this fall is getting a bit faster, as you can see from the last uh, week's data there. And in fact, the 29% fall in the last week is the fastest fall in hospital admissions at any point in the entire pandemic. If we go to the final slide, please. Where you can really see the effect of the vaccine is in the fall in the number of deaths. The number of deaths is falling faster and faster. And now deaths are falling by over a third each week. And in fact, in the last week, have fallen by 41%. They're falling faster than before. Now, 
The chief medical officer told us weeks ago that you'd first see the effect of the vaccine in fewer people dying and then in reduced hospitalizations. And I believe that that is exactly what is happening. What this all shows is that the link from cases to hospitalizations and then to deaths that had been unbreakable before the vaccine, that link is now breaking. The vaccine is protecting the NHS and saving lives. And right across the country, the country's plan is working. As well as this real world data, I want to share the results of a study by the University of Bristol, which clearly shows the difference the vaccination programme is making. This study looked at all patients over 80 who were admitted with serious respiratory disease in Bristol. And the results showed that a single dose of both the Pfizer or the Oxford AstraZeneca jab offers around 80% protection against hospitalisation after at least two weeks, even amongst the most frail and those with underlying medical conditions. Again, as with the data on this that were published last week, the effect was slightly stronger in the Oxford jab than with Pfizer. And what this corroborates is what we have seen over the past couple of weeks, the hard evidence that vaccines work. They're the best way of securing our freedom because they're the best way of protecting us. As of midnight last night, 21.3 million people had been vaccinated. And I can tell you for the first time that we have vaccinated now two-fifths of the entire adult population of the United Kingdom. Yesterday I was in Scotland seeing the combined teamwork of NHS Scotland and Scottish local authorities and the armed forces delivering jabs in Hamilton. And they were all working together as one towards a common goal of protecting us all. And as anybody who's been to a vaccination centre will know, the, the joy on people's faces as they get the jab is unbelievably uplifting. And more and more people will be getting this feeling of protection over the next few weeks and months. We're on course to hit our target of offering a first dose to everyone who's over 50 or part of an at-risk group by the 15th of April and all adults by the end of July. The vaccine rollout has allowed us to set out our roadmap for how we'll carefully lift some of the restrictions that we've all endured for far too long. And as we do this, we'll be drawing on the huge testing infrastructure that's now in place. And I just want to spend a moment on this. We're now testing 2.8 million people a week. The roadmap is built on the principle of replacing the protection that comes from lockdown with the protection that comes from vaccines and regular testing. So as we open up, for instance, care homes, as I mentioned a moment ago, to visitors, that will come with regular testing for visitors. And as schools and colleges return, we'll be giving teachers, staff, parents, secondary and college students and their households access to rapid, regular testing twice a week in term time and in holidays. And I urge all those and the households of those who are going back to school or to college next week to take up this offer. One of the most dangerous things about this virus one of the most dangerous things is that around a third of those who get it don't get any symptoms at all and yet can still pass the disease on to others. That's why it's so important that all of us follow the social distancing and take the precautions that we know we must. Rapid, regular testing is a critical part of our response. And as we do so much more we can do more because of the huge capacity built up by NHS Test and Trace. So I would urge you, if you're eligible, to participate in one of these regular testing programmes, like I do, because that is how we will keep this virus under control as we continue to roll out the vaccine. For more information, go to gov.uk forward slash coronavirus. And I'd urge everybody who's eligible to get that regular testing. Now, I know also that this pandemic has been an anxious time for so many young people, and I just want to spend a moment on this. After all, growing up is tough enough, even at the best of times. So in these very difficult times, it's been even tougher. Homeschooling, being unable to meet up with friends, not having regular sport, 
being stuck at home. I know just how much people are looking forward to going back to school, to seeing friends in a classroom properly, rather than just on Zoom. Monday will be a long-awaited day for many people. But for some, it's also a moment of unease and anxiety. We need to make sure we get the help to young people to help them get through this and get life going again and give them the support that they need. We've worked hard throughout the pandemic to make sure mental health services stay open. We've set up 24-7 support for those in need. And I'm delighted to be able to announce today that we'll be allocating an extra £79 million to boost mental health support for children and young people. Almost 3 million people will benefit from more mental health support teams, children and young people. And those mental health support teams in schools will be working hard to ensure people get access to the support and care that they need. And we'll be expanding access to mental health services in the community too. I'd like to end with some good news on our work to tackle new variants. Thanks to the brilliant team who've been working so hard over the past week, we've now successfully identified the sixth case of the variant of concern first identified in Manaus in Brazil. Using the latest technology and with the dogged determination of our testing and tracing scheme, we've successfully identified the person in question. The best evidence is that this person in question stayed at home and there's no sign that there's been any onward transmission. But as a precaution, we're putting more testing in in Croydon, where they live, to minimise the risk of spread. This positive outcome was only possible because of the huge genomic sequencing capacity that we now have in this country and because of our test and trace team so they could identify these cases, track them down, contact them. And it shows the importance of this capability that we've built and how important it is also to be transparent when new variants are found. Because whether it's here at home or around the world, testing, sequencing and being transparent about what you find helps stop the spread of this disease and in particular these variants of concern that are so worrying. So I'm really, really delighted that the team have done this work. They've worked absolutely flat out since these six cases were first identified uh, on uh, Friday and found the six positive cases, even though the form wasn't filled in quite right. So uh, Susan's going to say a little bit more about this in a moment, but my summary is that this is these things are moving in the right direction. These are challenging times, but thanks to the vaccine, we're making progress. We're not there yet. So as we go down the road to recovery, it's vital everybody still plays their part, follows the rules, and of course, when the call comes, get your jab. <laughs>